Hi folks, Corey Barker here, and I want to tell you about another new, exciting feature inside Photoshop CS4. Now, it's not necessarily a new feature, it's more of an improvement on something they added back in Photoshop CS3 Extended, and that's the new 3D capabilities. Now, when they introduced this, a lot of 3D artists were finding, you know, uses for it and everything like that, but, you know, Photoshop artists in general weren't really finding the uses for it. Well, I'm excited to say they've added a whole host of new features with 3D that can be utilized by not just 3D professionals, but artists, designers alike. So, let's have a look at these new features. Now, back when they first introduced Photoshop CS3 Extended, I have to admit I got very excited because of the fact that it was going to be able to support 3D. And I like many others, jump to the conclusion that, hey, we're going to be able to create 3D objects, manipulate 3D inside Photoshop, and add that to our photos and illustrations and such like that. Wasn't quite the case. What really happened was it's, it had features that were probably catering more to existing 3D artists because what you had to do was bring a 3D object from another application like Maya or Lightwave and then import that into Photoshop. And then you had the tools, just a, just a handful of tools available to manipulate and edit textures and such like that. Didn't really catch on with the rest of the Photoshop community because didn't really have anything for them. Well, here in, inside Photoshop CS4 Extended, there is a few more tools, and I, and I hope that you know, a lot of Photoshop artists start to take notice of these because I myself have already been playing with these for some time, and I, say, I have to say, really, really, really cool stuff. So just want to show you a quick thing. I've got a couple more videos on the Net, um, Learning Center about a little bit more in depth on 3D, but I just want to kind of cover some simple aspects of it about how it's a little bit better than it was before and how we might be able to use it, utilize it much more than we did in uh, Photoshop CS3 Extended. Now, here I have an image. It's just a simple photograph. You can see it's just I've got a background layer. It's just a flat two-dimensional two image. And you notice, looking around the interface, you might notice some obvious changes when it comes to 3D, like, for instance, up here in the menu bar, 3D has its own menu now. So we've got, they crammed so much inside of this program with 3D that it actually ended up getting its own menu, which is very cool. Not only that, you notice in the toolbar here, we've got a couple of 3D tools here. Now, if you remember back in Photoshop CS3 Extended, when you brought in a 3D object and you needed, wanted to manipulate it, you had to double click right on the 3D object layer. Then it would reveal the 3D manip manipulation tools you make your changes, do whatever, and then you'd have to commit that change as if you were using the free transform. It would give you a little window, so do you want to commit? So you had to do that. A few more steps, even for 3D artists, this, this became relatively frustrating for them. So now what they've done is that they've accelerated it and made it so the tools are available right inside the toolbar, and you can freely work on a 3D object without having to go through the pains of committing the change and everything like that. You can just manipulate it like you would any other layer. Now, inside the menu here, notice there's a number of different items, but I'm going to be covering most of these in other videos. But what I want to concentrate on is something that I think a lot of people are going to utilize right away, and it's this one right here called New 3D Postcard from Layer. But I'll just show you real quickly. Notice now we can create shapes right inside Photoshop. We can create primitive shapes like a cube, cones, even a hat. Don't know why, but it's there. Soda cans, different things like that. Well, I'll cover those in later videos. But as I mentioned, I want to talk about this th new 3D postcard from Layer. Now, when I select that, notice what happens. It has gone and turned this flat two-dimensional file into a 3D layer. Now, it's still a flat two-dimensional photo, but now I can manipulate it as if it were a 3D, a 3D object. It now has 3D properties. Now, notice what, happened when I what happens when I select my 3D manipulation tool. Nothing really changed except we got a new object here, which if you move your mouse right above it, you get a little bar, you can move this around. This is the axis widget, and you notice it's got arrows and a bunch of different little parts you can highlight on to isolate specific manipulations to your 3D object. Now if I just grab this 3D rotate tool and just click right in the center of my document and just kind of drag off to the right, or off to the left rather, you notice what it does. It rotates the object in a three-dimensional space. Now, notice that access widget it is moving in sync with the object because I can either freely move around the object with my tool like this or I can go and highlight specific areas of this access widget to manipulate that specific function. Now, notice, we'll start with the center here. If I highlight over the center box here, this allows me to scale the 3D object up and down. So dragging the mouse up scales it up. Dragging the mouse down scales it down. Makes sense. But if you go over here and, and, ax and just highlight over different other different parts here, got a square. Now each axis point has all these similar shapes. 
Now this first shape is a scale tool, and it will scale the object based on that particular axis. So you see it's scaling it this way. If I take this top box, it'll scale it down this way. So it's isolating specific changes to the object. This one will scale it at a Z um, axis, except that we don't have any real dimension to this object, so we don't see any change in that, in that regard. But now if I drag over this object, notice it gives me a little bit of kind of like a halo. This is my rotation tool. And it's going to allow me to, when I click on it and drag, it'll rotate the object on that specific axis, and it will isolate it to that. If I try and rotate this freehand, it will just go all crazy and everything, so it isolates that to that point. If I highlight on another one, you can see it rotates around that axis, giving me very precise control over specific aspects of it. You can also move it in a 3D space. Each one of these has an arrow tip. If you highlight over each one, we'll move it along that axis by dragging the mouse left or right, up and down, and on the z-axis as well. And you can certainly move this axis widget around just by highlighting the top bar here and just move it in position wherever you need it to be. But it's a quick and easy way of manipulating a 3D object and making it a little bit easier. Now notice when I highlight over the corner areas of my object here, it shows a little plane. It allows you to freely kind of move that object on that specific plane. So I'm on the up and down axis here. And if we just kind of maneuver this around, we'll get this highlight here. It allows me to move it in a more dimensional space there. So various ways of manipulating your 3D object right in a three-dimensional space. So there's just a, a little quick hint of the various things you can do with 3D. Notice we just turned that simple flat photo into a three-dimensional object, which we can put into an illustration, a layout, create a really interesting three-dimensional space. You can also do this to a video layer. That's right. Remember back in CS3, we were able to import QuickTime video to manipulate and make a little small changes to. You can also apply the same 3D property to a video layer. So, as I mentioned, in other videos, we're going to be covering other more in-depth aspects of 3D inside Photoshop CS4 Extended. All right, so there you have it, just a quick sneak peek of the new 3D features inside Photoshop CS4 Extended. Now, do have some more in-depth videos over on the NAP Learning Center. If you're a NAP member, you can go check that out. If not, go check out PhotoshopUser.com for more information.